Yo guys, how is it going? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to our Nottingham Forest career mode in FIFA 17 episode 1 of season 2. And as you know, we did get promoted to the Premier League of course. We didn't do it the way I wanted it to but we got automatic promotion which is the main thing. It was the main aim to be honest. We didn't have to go through playoffs so let's go ahead and get into this video. We're going to talk about objectives and I have sold a few players. I will show you that. After showing the objectives, I've sold a few players during the pre-season tournament, which we did win pretty damn comfortably. There weren't any teams of any real big stature, so it was a pretty comfortable pre-season tournament. So we got maximum money for that. So now our transfer budget, I'll keep going to transfers to see the transfer budget. And I always get that mixed up because it's changed from the previous FIFAs. But we have 10.5 million in the transfer budget and in the wage budget, we have 227,000 which obviously is a huge amount of money in the wages which is just insane but obviously I can rearrange that and get more money in the transfer budget to help out with future transfers you haven't missed out on any transfers coming into the club I'm going to be doing all that sort of stuff from now until the first game of the season so let's go ahead and take a look at our objectives we got our finish the season with a profit margin of 17 million pound which hopefully is achieved because obviously financial is critical look at that it is i think if i fail a a financial one again this season i don't think i'll i think i will probably be sacked because the financial one of finished with a profit margin of 25 million which was last season i did fail on that hugely and i thought i was going to get sacked which i didn't i'm not going to worry about youth development to be honest right now i think i'll worry about that midway through this season Brand exposure, we've got to get £12.7 million in earnings from shirt sales, which hopefully is achievable because we got 6% already. 6% of that is achieved already. And reduced player, like I said, I've already sold a few players, so reduced the player wage by 42500 which it was easily done. I think it was easily done after a couple of sales. So domestic success, we've got to avoid relegation short term. And the FA Cup, we've got to reach the round of 32 stage. And obviously, long term in the Premier League, we've got to, within two seasons, finish mid-table. It's low priority, which I'm surprised about. I thought it would have been probably medium or high, at least. Because it's basically saying, if you get if you get relegated out of the Premier League, you know what? You can keep your job. <laughs> you can keep it. I mean, clubs nowadays don't do that. Don't do that. It's very few, very rare that happens when clubs get relegated or fight in relegation. They stick with the manager. But you know what? It's low priority. So I don't think we're going to get rele relegated anywhere. I don't think we're going to come close to being relegated. We've got a decent team. And we're also going to add probably two or three players to the squad. Our last objective is Continental. As you know, we are in Euro League because we got to the EFL Cup final and we won it also against Manchester United so the Euro League is obviously a very low priority so it's not a big deal but you know what I still want to go on a cup run in European football it'll be very very good indeed we've got to reach the knockout stages of course we've got to qualify first so we're going to ha go ahead now and take a look at the first month of the season which obviously the qualifying round is in we got hearts we got hearts but look at the first month of the season we've obviously got hearts two legs of course that it's it's an easier tie. I mean, there were some big clubs in there. We've got FC Basel, Feyenoord. We've got Milan, Malaga, Nice, Panathinaikos, Rosenborg, Schalke, Shakhtar Donetsk. We've got Torino, Valencia. I mean, there were some big, big clubs. We could have got a tougher team. So it is winnable, but it's still European football. Anything can happen, especially over two legs. But our first league game is at home to Arsenal. We got Newcastle away. Obviously, as you know, the best team in the championship last season. They, they probably deserve the title. And we did struggle against them So last season. I, don't, I think we beat them once in four games, which was insane. Because we did have them in the EFL Cup semi-final. And we, the first leg was 0-0. And then we scored literally in the last second of the second leg to win it 1-0. Which was just insane. And then the third league game is Tottenham at home. So, a very, very tough return to the Premier League, the top division. But let's go ahead now. Like I said, I have sold a few players. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the players that have left the club. We got Ward leaving for £1 million. Eric Leisure for £900,000. Cohen for £925,000. And Fox, the left-back, going for £600,000 also. 
a big transfer sums coming in for those four signings and of course we've still got players up for transfer and hopefully we'll leave the club and bring in transfer sum and obviously put money back into the wage which would help out a lot so let's go ahead now and take a look at the shortlist and make some transfer offers because i think we have what three weeks until the, the first game one two three yes we have just over three weeks before before the first league game and hopefully i can make two or three signings before that game against arsenal right and here is our shortlist we've got quite a few players on there but i'm only going to be going for three players on this shortlist at the moment we've got jordan pickford i'm going to be going for for our number one spot in goal to replace stojkovic i am actually going to be involving stojkovic in that deal with pickford we're going to go for terence congolo it was suggested in the comments so thank you for that he's actually a very decent player he can play left back and center back I'm a big fan of players that can play in more than one position because especially on the game, I mean, it helps out with tiredness and so injuries, of course, and suspensions, which I don't really get suspensions, to be honest. So it will help out, especially with injuries and tiredness. So thank you for that suggestion of Congolo, a very decent player. I'm going to be putting a bid in for him from Feyenoord. And we are also going to be putting in a bid for Thomas Ince at Cam. I mean, I'm not sure... Because we've got such a low budget, I'm not I'm not sure what sort of cam players to buy. Because I'm going to move Asam Belonga as my main striker. I'm going to move him from cam up top as my main striker. And have youngsters, uh, Walker and Thorne, as my backup strikers. Because they're, they're very decent indeed. But they, they, they're they backup strikers. So Asam Belonga can be my main striker. Take the, take the place of Rashford, basically. Obviously on loan from last season. And... We're going to have Thomas Ince play just behind Asam Belonga. So hopefully before the first game of the season, which I think in game is three weeks from now, we are going to make three signings. So let's go ahead and make some transfer offers. Here we go. Jordan Pickford, we're going to offer three and a half million pound plus Stojkovic, which is actually a very decent deal. And for Congolo, I think I'm going to offer about seven million pound, I think. £7 million, straight cash, Congolo, £7 million, let's see what they say to that, and of course, Thomas Ince, we are going to go ahead and I think we're going to put about £3 million. £3 million for Thomas Ince, so let's go ahead and advance and see what those three clubs come back with. Right, here we go, we've got a few tr uh, emails to get through, we've got Derby County first, they want £5 million for Thomas Ince. So I think we're going to up that to 3.2 million. See what they say to that. I think 3.5 will be the max I go to with Ince. Feyenoord want 14 million pound. I think I'm going to up that to 8 million pound. And Sunderland, let's see what they say. Are they interested in Stojkovic? Here we go. Even though we are interested in the player, they want 6.2 million plus Stojkovic. That is absolute ridiculous. So you know what? I think, no, we're not even going to put that up to 4 million. I think we're going to put that up to 3.7 plus Stojkovic. See what they say to that. We've got a transfer offer for Matthew Mills, I think it was. I think we're going to accept that to QPR, £650,000. Very nice indeed. 31, not good enough for the Premier League, in my opinion. And a player sold Damien Perkis to Birmingham for £675,000. So let's go ahead and advance and see what those three clubs come back with this time. Right, here we go. We've got quite a few emails yet again. Let's start from the bottom. We've got a transfer offer for Matty Fryat from Birmingham. 650000 Not going to bother Count Roffrin because he's 31. Not very good. They probably won't accept any more than that. We've got Bentner. 2.9 million for Nicholas Bentner. His value is 3.4. And can I just say... West Brom have just accepted a bid from Sunderland for Berahino. So they want to they want to replace Berahino with Nicholas Bentner, <laughs> which is ridiculous. I mean, Berahino isn't that great, to be honest, but replacing him with Bentner, even worse, in my opinion. So, you know what? I think, you know what? You give me five million. See what you say to five million. You just got 13 million from Sunderland for Berahino. So... Let's see what you say to that. Player sold. Matthew Mills to QPR is gone. Transfer offer has been accepted. 3.7 million plus Stojkovic. And he only wants 20,000. 1,000 on top of his current contract, which is actually very decent indeed. 20,000, four years and crucial first team players going straight into the starting 11. 
straight into number one position. And here we go. Transfer offer unacceptable. Obviously, we've done that. Let's get rid of that. Derby still want five million pound. I mean, you know what? 3.5. Like I said, 3.5 is the max I'm going to go to. If they don't accept 3.5, I'll just wait for, hopefully, one of you guys suggests me a good little cam player to play just behind Asim Belonga if they don't accept 3.5. And Feyenoord still want 14 million pounds. So, you know what? We're going to up it to 9 million. I think 9 million, maybe it's going to be the max I'll go to. I'm not so sure. Let's see what they say to that. Right, here we go. We've got four emails. Matty Fry has been sold and contract offer has been accepted by Jordan Pickford. A very good signing. He's only going to get better. 3.7 and Stojkovic going the other way. And unacceptable. Derby still want 5 million. I don't think I'm willing to pay 5 million for Thomas Ince, to be honest. So if you guys would be very, very nice and suggest a good cam player for me to play just behind Asim Belonga, that would be very, I'd be very, very grateful. And West Brom do not believe that Bentner is worth 5 million. I don't blame them. I do not blame them. New signing arriving. Jordan Pickford. So let's go ahead and advance and see what Feyenoord come back with. Hopefully they accept 9 million for Congolo. Here we go. We got an email and unacceptable. They want 14 million. They want 14 million. Well, I don't have a, I don't have enough money at the minute, so I'm going to have to go ahead and rearrange the money and come back to that deal. I think I'm going to put it up to 10 million. I think I'm going to pull it up to 10 million. Right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and put 10 million pound on the table to Feyenoord for Congola. That's going to have to be the last, last offer I make. Because 10 million is a lot of money. We ain't the richest of clubs at the moment. So let's go ahead and see what they say. Here we go. Transfer offer has been accepted. 10 million pound for Congolo. He wants 20,000 and four years and we're going to give him obviously a crucial first team squad role and we also have a transfer offer for Nicholas Bentner yet again from Newcastle you know what you give me 4.5 million pound you give me 4.5 million let's see what they say to that Newcastle have come back and said they've counter offered with 4 million pounds so you know what that's pretty decent I'm going to accept that I'm going to accept 4 million for Nicholas Bentner. His value is 3.4. He's 29. Not that great. So let's see what they can do with him. And contract offer has been accepted by Congolo. We have Congolo and Pickford at the moment. And we're getting rid of Bentner. We've got rid of quite a few players, to be honest. So, so far, so good. But we are going to go ahead. And I think that's going to be it for my part. Obviously, Congolo was suggested in the comments. So thank you for that suggestion. And obviously, Pickford was my sign-in. So now I'm going to wait. We're going to just go ahead and skip to the Arsenal game and get straight into the Arsenal game, our first league game. I think it's only going to be one game this in this episode, guys, because of all that transfer, all that transfer business. I mean, it's going to take up a lot of time. And it's, if I do two games, it's probably going to be such a long video. So I'm going to just do one game and then that'll be the end of the episode. So like I said, because Thomas hints that you know, they want 5 million, suggest a nice... A nice player that can play in that sort of cam role behind the striker. I would be very, very grateful. So, let's go ahead and get into our first Premier League game with Nottingham Forest at home to Arsenal. Hopefully, we can start the season on a very, very good note. And with three points. Obviously, going to be a tough game. Arsenal were very, very good. So, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Here is the team we are going for in our first Premier League game against Arsenal. We've got Pickford in there for his debut in goal. We've got Gabriel at right back. Mancian is our captain. Lamb partnering Mancian, obviously, at centre back. We've got Congolo at left back. Aaron's on the left. Osborne on the right. Livermore Kasami in central midfield. And we've got Asambolonga up top and Lika playing just behind him. But like I said, give me some cam rolls. I've changed my mind. I don't want strikers. There's a couple of suggestions of strikers, I think, in the comments. But I've changed my mind. I think I'm going to use Asambolonga as my number one striker with youngsters Walker and Thorne as my backup because they are pretty decent. They're decent enough to use in the Premier League, I think. Maybe not against the big, big clubs like Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool and all that. But against like, teams like West Brom and stuff like that, I think they would be useful in those sort of games. So leave suggestions of good cam players I can use instead of Lika because I do not see him. Oh, we're on the attack here. Aaron's on his right foot. Oh, 
That was terrible. Five minutes in, not that's a good start. It's a good start from us. We had a shot of goal already. Five minutes in. Kasami on the ball. He's going to play a nice ball into Asamblonga. Back into Kasami. He's on his left foot. Across the keeper. Oh, oh, I was about to say, oh, penalty. But he didn't take me out. He got the ball. Good good tackle. Here we go, Kasami. What can we do? We're going to look for it. Here we go, Lika. It's a good turn. Near post shots. Goal kick. Just under 20 minutes played. And we have had a good start to this match. Campbell. Is he going to turn Congolo here? Congolo's strong and quick. And he's not. He's lost the ball. Here we go. Lika out wide to Osborne. Oh, the slide tackle just comes in there. Osborne going to play it right out wide to Aarons. Good first touch, please. Yes, this is good. Back post it to Asambolonga. Oh, Mustafi. What the hell is going on? That's a penalty. I think the keeper just came out and completely took out one of my players, Chesney. I'm not sure if it was Asambolonga or another player. But he just comes out and, yeah, just takes out Asambolonga. Doesn't get nowhere near the ball. And... What minute are we in? 25th? 25th minute and Aston Blanca has a chance to put us 1-0 up. Here we go. Top left corner. Here we go. I don't think that's enough power for top left. Oh, we've hit the post. Oh, we've hit the post. Here we go. Aston Blanca through to Lika. Back into Aston Blanca. This is good player. Straight towards goal. And Chesney pulls off a very good save. Just under half hour played. Let's see how it was from this angle. Did it take a little slight deflection off Mustafi there? But still a very good save. And a nice bit of play between Lika. Maybe he might be usable in that position. He's done very well so far in the opening 30 minutes. But here we go from the corner. Oh, comes back out here. Oh, I wanted to control it. But he totally just ran away from it instead of controlling it. But here we go. Osborne whipping it in again. Asam longer. They're going to get it out. But it's only come to Mancien on his left foot. Oh, Chesney pulls off a very good save yet again. What a strike from Mancien though on his left foot. And there's the halftime whistle. The first half has been pretty decent. I think we deserve to be in front to be honest. We've had Chesney's pulled off a couple of saves. Obviously we missed a penalty. We hit the post. Mansion with an unbelievable strike from what about 35 yards or so and Chesney pulls off another good save but half time it's nil nil but I think Arsenal we're gonna have to hit them on the break because they play such quick football around the penalty area they play such quick football you just cannot get the ball back and you just have to hit them on the break so hopefully more of the same in the second half from ourselves here we go Arsenal down the right hand side Jenkinson is he gonna put in a cross he's got Giroud in there that's what he's good for Good for his heading, but he's not putting a cross in, is he? That is just ridiculous. Is he going to keep possession? Yes, they've got a throw in. Down the right-hand side. This is what he's... That's what Giroud is in the team for. Get a crosses in and... Oh, thought he was going to lose it then. But yeah, Giroud is in the, in, in the team for crosses. Get the ball in there. I mean, they could have had so many opportunities towards goal because they've got in that position so many times. And here we go. Or in the attack here. Go on, Osborne. He's, got, he's past his man. We're going to have to turn back. Oh, who's there? Kasami. First time effort. Oh, another great save. But are we going to keep it in? That's a goal kick. He's just touched it. Out of play, Aaron's. Oh, another great save from Chesney. Here we go. Asam Longa straight into Lika. Look at the space here for Kasami. We're going to turn it on his left foot. Have a strike towards goal. I think that's more of a comfortable save there for Chesney. But he still had to get quickly towards it. Going into that bottom corner. But. 68 minutes played and Arsenal haven't been in it with chance wise possession wise of course they've been all all possession but they're not really doing anything with the ball they get wired and then they just mess around with it and then they lose it they don't put any crosses into the box which is just so so weird because they've got someone like Giroud in the box that could cause me so many problems but here we go Ramsey on the ball as I speak open space in my defense he's played it into Toro and over the crossbar. I think that is their first opportunity towards goal, I think. Right, we played just over 70 minutes in this game. I think we're going to make a triple substitution. We're going to bring Aaron's off on the left-hand side. Bring Keriel on. And I think we're going to move Asamblonga at Cam. Bring Lika off. And we're going to bring on Walker. See what he can do in these last 20 minutes or so. And we're also going to bring off Kasami for Lansbury. Oh, Arsenal through. We've got a couple minutes remaining. Lucas is on the ball. Oh, he's turned back. He's dummy. He's put a cross into the back post. Oh, what is going on? He could have easily got that. Was that Sanchez? Or is he just getting a yellow card? Yeah, he's just getting a yellow card. I don't know who the hell that was at the back post. But wow, I don't know if the my defender going in for the header put him off. But wow, what 
an opportunity that was for Arsenal to basically take all three points right at the death of this game. But here we go. We're going to play this right down line here. Kerry has got fresh legs. Come on, get in the box, Asen Belonga. Get in the box. This is a great time. Got a couple of step overs. Turn back inside. Just a bit too much. And there is the full time whistle. It does end nil nil. I mean, it was a quite an eventful game, to be honest, from ourselves. We had quite a few chances. Chesney pulled off some good saves. And we also missed a penalty. Of course, I hate penalties on this game. I don't know about anyone else. But <laughs> the first game in the Premier League ends nil nil to Arsenal. But you know what? At home or away, I'll take a point against Arsenal any day of the week. So let's go ahead and take a look at our up and coming games we have for you in the next episode. Right, of course, that is the end of the episode. We're going to take a look at our up and coming games. Another match has been thrown into the mix in the first month of the season. It's an EFL Cup game. We are looking to obviously retain the EFL Cup because we did win it last season against Manchester United in the final. But our first game to retain the EFL Cup is away at Wolves. So in the next episode, we'll have two games for you. We'll have the first leg of the qualifying round against Hearts, which is at home, I believe. Yes, it is. And then we'll end the episode with Newcastle away. So that is where I'm going to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. I hope to see you in the next episode, guys. Have a fantastic day. Peace.